Welcome back to the lecture series in bioenergy. So, in the last class, we talked about the pyrolysis process, where uh, we talked about when we burn certain things in the absence of oxygen and at a temperature around 500 degrees centigrade, you can transform any material having either a liquid phase or a solid phase or a gaseous phase. And these kind of transformation are used by nature or through geological eras have led to the formation of coal, natural gas, different kind of natural oils. As one go down the rocks underneath the earth, one can see such deposits. Uh, just to recap, in the last class, what we talked about, we talked about the natural processes, how gasific, how pyrolysis has taken place. We talked about the volcanic eruptions where suddenly, all of a sudden, the lack of oxygen things got burned down. And then we talked about how, under heavy pressure and high temperature, deep inside the earth crust, through centuries and billions of years, different forms of uh, energy materials have formed. Further, we talked about how this pyrolysis technology is uh, being mimicked in the lab and I give you a schematic showing you that in an organized chamber or a nitrogenated chamber, where you are essentially using these two gases to make the whole environment inert. You can keep any kind of sample, you can keep uh, any kind of natural fibers or natural materials and you can pyrolyze them by burning it over a period of time. Now, there we talked about two interesting aspects. What will be the rate of uh, raising the temperature? Say for example, a sample in a room temperature is sitting at say 30 degrees centigrade and I wish to burn it at 500 degrees centigrade. The question is how you are going to change the temperature. You can change it in a stepwise fashion 30, 40, 50, 60 or you can even slower it down further 30 to 31, 32 likewise or what you can do you can just shift the temperature very fast. Based on that, in the last class we talked about flash pyrolysis, where you raise the temperature at a phenomenal rate. Instead of a staircase model, you almost go like this. Within few seconds, you raise the temperature say from 30 to 500. Such flash pyrolysis or the term which is used for such uh, drastic increase is termed as flash pyrolysis. Depending on the rate of change of temperature or the slope, say for example, just if you look the slide. So, depending on say for example, how you are raising the temperature with respect to time. So, on this scale you have time and on this scale you have temperature ok. So, depending on how we are increasing, you can increase in a stepwise fashion as I was mentioning you over a period of time, whatever will be your temperature you are setting. So, for example, this is the temperature you are setting up to which you have to reach, you can do it like this. You can even make it more slower, you can go like this and eventually at some point you will reach here or you can raise it like this. Or you can even if you have such gadgets you can raise it even further. So, what you are essentially seeing out here is you are changing the slope of the rise. If this is the slope, so, so if I draw a line like this out here, 
average increase over a period of time, what you are essentially doing is if you measure the slope and out here I draw a instead of making it look that stepwise. So, every time you are changing the slope or in other word and this could be even almost only a line like that if it goes straight in the x y axis. Okay. What you are seeing is the rate of change of temperature and depending on how you are changing the temperature these kind of situations are called flash pyrolysis. So, this is a, a recap what I wish to share in this slide because depending on the rate of change of temperature which you are exposing the material and all throughout so keep in mind you are doing all these things in the absence of oxygen. So, in an inert environment or reasonably inert environment. So, depending on the rate of change of temperature, the phase transition in the material is going to change. In other words, what does that mean? That means, say so for example, you have a material like this, which you want to pyrolyze. This is your raw material or some form of biomass what you are obtaining depending on so, this is your biomass. Depending on which route you are following, say for example, you follow this route of increase or you follow this route of increase or you follow this route of increase, the fate will vary. You may get liquid solid or gas. This is not in order, just I am telling you. These are the possible fate. So, in other word, in the highlighting feature is there is a phase transition in the material happening and this phase transition is essentially nothing but rearrangement of the overall structure in terms of its bonds, joining, making and breaking of bonds. So, this rearrangement and the distance between the molecules is controlled by the rate of increase of the temperature. Based on that, what I will do now, we will classify the different kind of fuels what are developed through pyrolysis process. And here it is noteworthy that these kind of things have been formed in nature through billions of years. Whatever natural gas what we observe, what are the, the different kind of inflammable uh, liquid fuels what we see, what the or the coal or other such uh, carbonized material in high temperature in lack of oxygen they have formed. So, again I am reiterating the fact that what we are trying to do now, we are trying to create a synthetic condition to make something equivalent to a coal or something equivalent to a oil, what nature has done in billions of years. The reason why I am repeating this fact because there is a philosophical shift till this time since industrial revolution or discovery of coal, use of coal as a fuel, use of petroleum as a fuel, use of natural gas as a fuel, man has continuously used the resources which have developed through billions of years of geological evolution. But today, man is trying to evolve these compounds in the lab, which by and large is one of the 
biggest dream and definitely a biggest triumph of mankind because they are daring to think in the way how nature has developed these kind of things over billions of years. And that is why I am highlighting that the whole area of bioenergy is in itself is we are tweaking or we are trying to emulate or we are trying to mimic what evolution has done in billions of years. And this is no easy challenge. This is one big challenge that in order to solve our energy problem or in order to safeguard nature instead of exploiting nature, we are now following a different route, a different track, a different trajectory. Okay? So, coming back to what are the different fates you can have. So, possibilities are there. So, you have this kind of material out here and you are pyrolyzing them, pyrolysis in the absence of oxygen okay? and approximately reaching a temperature of 500 degrees centigrade. The first a solid material what you can obtain which is basically something like a charcoal. Okay? And the yield for such charcoal formation is around 35 percent. So, it means you take 100 gram, you only, so if you have 100 grams of this material, you get 35 percent of it. Okay? And this is a slow pyrolysis or also called carbonization. Slow pyrolysis or also called carbonization process. So, in other word, this is the process, if we talk about a slow process, then this is essentially is this kind of rise, what you see out here. This is the kind of, it is a very slow process or maybe much, much slower, much, much slower like this. And this time scale you can always change. You can have it in minutes, you can have it in 100 years, likewise, okay? likewise, slowly, 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 slowly there is a transition. So, there is no such flash transition taking place out here. So, this is a slow pyrolysis process which is called carbonization. The second option is that you convert it into liquid form. which is having an efficiency of around 80 percent, which is far better than having a solid transformation. And this happens as by flash pyrolysis and this needs a low temperature. Okay. So, the range of you know, 500 or 600 or likewise. Okay. Then the third option is one is that, so we have the solid fuel, we have the liquid fuel in the form of bio oil, then we could have fuel gas, which also has an efficiency of around 85, 80 percent transformation. And this also requires flash pyrolysis, which happens at low temperature. Okay? So, these are the three feats of either you can make charcoal out of it or you can make oil out of it or you can make gas out of it. So, in terms of the charcoal part, the first part what we have talked about out here this apart from formation of charcoal, it has some very innovative applications in terms of energy storage materials. So, such pyrolysis process in the laboratory condition could be used to make energy storage materials. 
In terms of energy storage materials, we will not talk about in this class, probably in the next class we will talk about. You can make materials like graphene like materials. In other word, graphene like materials. So, in the forum there was an interesting question which was asked, so which I wish to share with you people that where graphene comes in the bioenergy. As a matter of fact, nature through evolution has evolved most of the materials what we are now discovering in our laboratory conditions. So, this kind of transformation which is a special transformation we will come later on to that. This kind of transformation say for example, we get very cheap and good quality of graphenes. So, think very holistically on one hand we are using biomass to generate energy. In terms of energy we are mostly talk about electrical energy. So, then you need some modules which is also derived from nature to store that form of energy and that is the answer to the wise gentleman who asked me that question that why where it is falling. So, I am trying to bring it very holistically in front of you that not only energy production is should be our last goal, we have to think how to store that energy. Without that all our efforts to generate energy will be futile because if we cannot store it then we cannot for the time when we do not have energy or we are running short of our raw materials we should have some source to store it and use it. We can make it much more uh, portable, we can send energy capsules to larger distance. So, we will talk about this specifically how from, so this section what we will be talking about not in this lecture, we will talk about how certain biomass could be converted into graphene like materials or maybe superior than graphene materials by the process of pyrolysis. Okay, this is one aspect what we will be dealing with and we will have a bit of a laboratory demonstration how this could be done. So, there will be one class which I will be dedicated probably at the fag end of the curves where practically how this is being done will be demonstrated in the form of a video okay? and how those could be charged such material, how you can form different kind of cells out of it and you can store energy, you can store charges into it and you can use it to run different kind of devices. Okay? This is one aspect. Second aspect what we will be dealing now is the second aspect which is this part. Okay? the flash pyrolysis at low temperature to transform the biomass to bio oil. This process and what are the salient features that is what we are going to talk. So, now we just cut down other stuff. So, here you have the biomass and through flash pyrolysis you are making at low temperature you are making bio oil. So, such oils could be before we get into the process and the drawbacks such oils could be used in engines, turbines. So, when I am talking about turbines, so realize again the same situation, when you are running a turbine you are generating electricity and when you are generating electricity you needed another bio sustainable or bio compatible material for storage of such electricity and that is where our couple of minutes what I was discussing with you that how we could use uh, these kind of materials to pyrolyzed and make them charge storage devices that will come very handy out here. Okay. So, you can run engines, you can run turbines and it is also used, it is uh, used as a 
feed stock for refineries and of course, there are issues which has to be taken care and we will come to that. This is one of the challenging aspect, but the problem it comes with certain such bio oils what are formed out here what we are talking about comes with certain inherent problems and now we will talk about and why especially is this part the use is not so easy. The problems what such oils comes are okay. So, the first issue is they have poor thermal stability okay. and there is huge amount of corrosivity. So, what do we mean by thermal stability and corrosivity? In terms of thermal stability, most of the time this thermal stability instability happens because if your sample has certain amount of oxygen trapped in it and presence of oxygen not only lead to instability in the molecule itself, but it also leads to the oxidation or corrosivity in the engines where you are using them. So, most of these bio oils which are formed from biomass comes with this inherent problem of having a corrosive nature and uh, having thermal instability. Now, think slightly differently every time I am bringing you back to the evolution the kind of natural oils what we get or from petrol or other things why those do not suffer from these problems thermal instability or corrosivity. We use petrol, we use diesel right, we have diesel engines, we have petrol engines, we have two stroke engine, we have four stroke engines based on how much power we are generating. Why this natural products or natural fuel does not suffer from all these problems? And the reason to ask you this question is that, that is the way one has to think how to advance the research in transformation technology or in terms of how your conversion technology of biomass to biofuels. So, as a novice or as even an expert one if one has to think that how I am going to convert it, the first thing one has to understand how geologically these fuels have formed. If you know how they have formed, it, so again it is not a easy thing to answer. Why it is not an easy thing to answer? Because we cannot go back in time, I cannot go or you cannot go billions of years back in time to figure out how these phase transitions have taken place. But through our geological studies, we can at least try to make some smart guesses. Possibly this has happened, possibly this has happened, possibly this has happened. Now, if we talk about corrosivity, how possibly nature when it formed petrol or uh, petrol reservoirs are formed or um, diesel and all these things were formed, how these freed themselves from oxygen, how they never had the corrosivity. So, think you have to think in a way how oil is being extracted. So, those of you who have some idea and those who do not have this just to give you a feel. 
So, generally what happens if you think that uh, I will just make a drawing. So, to your imagination will become like if this is the earth crust okay, and say for example, this is a part of the earth and suppose somewhere here you have the oil. Okay. So, what generally you see from the top is that there is something which is coming out from the earth crust and possibly something has gone down like this and which is pumping the oil out of it. Right. So, the oil comes out and then it goes to the refineries. So, let me put the nomenclature earth crust okay. and so it is a surface. So, here you have the oil reservoir and here you are extracting oil. Okay. Now, whenever you think of such situation, what comes in your mind? Do you think that just like a water well, you have a well like this and there is a lot of water filled in it or something else comes in your mind? Actually, as a matter of fact, the way all of you have seen a well from where we take out water, actually oil wells are not like that. The way it is actually is, say for example, so the earth crust, there is the rocks and likewise you know you are going down. And so, in this regions, if you see all the rocks which are there, all these rocks if you magnify it, all these rocks are porous rocks and all their cavities, they have cavities all over these rocks. Okay. These cavities are filled with oil. So, as if this is a huge rock with lot of test tubes or lot of small cavities in the form of test tubes which are actually filled with oil. So, unlike what you see in a water well, it is not like this, something like this. Okay. So, now what happens when you are putting that oil borer into it? it crushed through that and all these rocks are filled with so much oil, the oil started oozing out and you siphon it out. So, what I wanted to put here is the way you think you take out water from the well is not the way oil is present. Now, what is the information we are gathering out of it? I will come just soon after this, what is the information you are gathering? What I will do now before I get, so remember this diagram what I drew for you on the slide that the these rocks which are present here are having tons of test tubes or not just to give you an idea, give you a feel. It is not really test tube, it is just like similar to test tube as if there are small reactor vessels on the rocks which are filled with oils. So, it is something like this. Okay. So, this whole area may have tons and tons of rocks which are filled with oils. Now, keep this information in mind and let us see what all has to be done in order to extract oil, in order to make this oil what we are getting to reduce or to bypass this problem of thermal stability and corrosivity. I will come back because there is a significance to this drawing what I drew for you. So, in order to bypass, so where we started, we started like this. These are the problems and the question which I pose to you is why in nature the oils what we get in the form of petrol, gasoline or gases, they are not corrosive. What makes them so pure and so uh, pristinely inflammable as compared to the bio oil what we are making in the lab. And there I pose the question to you, if one has to understand or advance the conversion technology, then one has to think the way nature may have evolved these processes of 
oil formation and oil storage and we will come back to that. Okay, thank you.